Much like teams yesterday, we took the day off. Wow. You've been, that one's been kind of in your pocket for the past 24 hours? Just... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> if you aren't familiar, everybody, uh, Microsoft Teams did not show up for President's Day. <laughs> uh, this uh, platform was down for a couple hours, creating a little havoc for a Monday mm -hmm. morning for everybody across the globe who could not log into Teams. Yeah, we all needed a day off. Yeah. It's kind of like when the email server goes down. Is anybody really upset? Yeah, it's like, eh, oh well. What are you, what you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Another coffee Computers. break. Another coffee break. I'll tell you what is nice though is that my kid is back. At, my kid was home for five days straight because she had yeah. Thursday, Friday off school, then the weekend, and then Monday off. Right. And, um, there was there was not a lot accomplished in this house. You guys, um, we're let's see. I mean, I would imagine where you live is probably the school schedule is similar to here. But mm -hmm. when we lived in Massachusetts, I think this was true of a lot of New England. The vacations were always different. So our kids had vacations like a full week this week in February, mm -hmm. the week of President's Day, and then another week off in April, you know, which seems really excessive. Like yeah. a lot of the country has like a spring break kind of a thing. Um, here, we don't have a spring break at all. So they have random days off here and oh, there. Really? But there's no, yeah, there's no week off in March at all. So we, um, we she does have a spring break. This was just. Yeah, um, I think that's more typical. They, the reason I think they had Thursday, Friday off is that they have a really short Christmas break. Oh, okay. And so, so they, have, they, they add days later. Because like when I think when I was growing up, I remember it being like a full two weeks being <laughs> off. Wow. And now she only had one week off and then they have. Yeah, just that's, like, that's, that's better. You know, it is. You need oh, to split I think it, it is better. I think the parents were probably going insane too. Yeah. My daughter had friends of hers from Dedham over for the long weekend and um, they're good kids, but um it's nice that they're. Uh, <laughs> uh, you don't alarm. have to go home, but you can't. A lot stay. of screaming. It was like being at a, like a like a, t a tweener concert of some kind the yeah. whole time. You know? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not looking forward to that because my kid, when she has friends over, it's like I, I don't deal well with loud, sustaining. Screaming. No, I don't either. I this morning I had to say I was like Stephanie, you got to go talk to these kids. I can't. I, I can't. I just got up. I have a cup of coffee. I'm reading the paper. <laughs> you know, I, I I can't listen to people screeching over Facetime. You know. Just screaming, you know, yeah. good kids. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're, they're no, good kids. They're I'm, kids. I'm really That's glad the they thing. came. That's yeah. The yeah. Number one attribute. They are kids. They are loud yep. and they are destructive. Yep. Yep. They are. Yeah. So this, uh, I wrote this up right before the show. This is kind of, it's not, I don't know why I'm pointing at this, but it's this company, mm -hmm. Google, uh, it's going to have <laughs> a, a, a keynote at, uh, GDC, which is the game developer conference on March 19th. Yep. And I'm, Everyone is leading this up to believe that this is going to be the launch or potentially the announcement of the launch of their game streaming platform, which they showed off yeah. late last year called Project Stream. Um, there's yep. going to be a keynote followed by three sessions and two of the sessions kind of give away that the launch appears to be pretty quick because the first one, it says pre basically pre-launch optimization. And then the second session is post-launch. That could mean apps. That could just mean apps. It, yeah. Well, it, but it's a game developer <laughs> conference though. Well, I mean, get, you know, apps meaning mobile yeah, yeah. games. And then there's post-launch optimization. So it, it is likely gaming related. We know that it's probably streaming related. What we don't know is, yeah. is if this, is like the powerhouse PC games, which is what they demoed off with Project Stream, or right. are they trying to get closer to like the mobile games and that kind of stuff? I mean, my understanding is that what they're working on is kind of a back end service that other companies will use. And, yeah. you know, when, if you think about Android as potentially the biggest games platform on earth, um, it makes sense they'd be at GDC. This isn't the first time they've been there, mm -hmm. but I don't remember what kind of presence they had. They're definitely what trying they to make a big announced. splash with this one. This is not yeah. supposed to be some yeah. sort of like subdued little thing. I think it's fascinating to watch all these companies kind of um, rally around gaming right now, right? Yeah. Uh, every company on earth is planning a gaming service of some kind right now. I mean, and uh, I don't know if this is direct. It's not really. But I, it's almost like in the wake of Fortnite, everyone has woken up to something that we've known for a long time, you know, which is that. Mm -hmm. Gaming is a bigger market than Hollywood entertainment. I mean, yeah. uh, for all of the People magazines and Us magazines and all this nonsense on TV and that focuses on celebrities, um, there's a much bigger thing happening entertainment-wise than that nonsense, and it's video games, which, you know, granted, is, there's its share of nonsense for sure, but um, it, I feel like this is finally coming to a head. Um, 
you know, that the world is understanding that this is a thing, you know, because mm-hmm. it is. It absolutely is a thing. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting. It, it will be. Uh, and we will learn out more here in a month. Actually, I was as I was writing it up, I was like, man, we are going to go like headfirst into a tech kind of palooza because you're headed to yeah. Barcelona soon for this yeah. Sunday. Then we have Game Developer Conference, which takes place two to three weeks later. Mm-hmm. And then roughly four weeks after that, four to six weeks after that is when the development conferences start. Yeah, Google and Microsoft. Yeah. And then Apple's is in June. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, Samsung had their developer show back in, I don't know, November probably. I don't know why they do that the way they do it. But uh, Samsung, of course, has its big announcements tomorrow, too, for the mm-hmm. S10s. Yeah. Um, and you know, the last time Samsung had a product announcement like that for the Note nine, I guess it's called is you remember Fortnite was a big part of that announcement, right? The Samsung was advertising that phone as being the ultimate Mm -hmm. handset for gamers, you know? So it's, uh, there's a lot of stuff happening. There's also, you know, of course this E3 is this summer and I think Sony's not going, but Microsoft is Mm -hmm. Sony presumably is going to have its own event at some point this year where they'll announce their next PlayStation. Um, there's a lot of stuff, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of never stops. Yeah. It's, uh, this is it, where, this is the tip of the iceberg. I, I candidly, I completely forgot about Samsung's thing because it's leaked everywhere, including yeah. it was somebody posted on Twitter. I think it was maybe in, it was in, maybe in Spain or somewhere like that. Nor- Norway, I think. It, uh, well, they actually ran a TV commercial. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think it was Norway, but yeah, yeah. It, it's, uh, <laughs> it's just, it's always good stuff when you're like you're you're the source of your own leaks, you know. Yeah, I um, guess control your own destiny at that point or something. Yeah, well, it, Samsung has had a little bit of fun with it. You know, they're mm-hmm. allowing people to pre-order this phone that supposedly no one's talked about. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's you know who cares? I guess I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean they're in the same kind of thing that Apple is really. It's uh, yeah, they know that yeah. the they've reached their probably max amount of sales they're going to still sell a whole bunch of phones for a very long time but that's yep. why there were rumors or leaks or whatever you're coming out that uh, apple's shifting a lot of the priorities to try to shift over to more services rather than yeah um, products i'm working stuff. on the math of that one i've got an yeah. apple editorial that i thought i was going to put up today but then there was a microsoft thing that took precedent over mm-hmm. it but there's a fascinating bit of math I, i've done the math before on the services where i've shown how comparatively small it is and even if it grew a bunch what it looks like but yeah <clears throat> there was a big report on Apple's um, TV service, w- which, you know, not to blow away everything I'm about to, or, or, you know, that I will eventually publish, but <clears throat> there's there's, uh, there's a real disconnect, I think, between a TV service, which I think is mm-hmm. logical for Apple to try. Yeah. They have a music service, um, you know, okay. But they're making their own content, you know. And uh, sorry, Apple fans, but I think when we think of this company and its brand and the things that people really love about it, Making TV shows like, um, you know, that you see on other stations is not, it, it's a, there's a big disconnect there. Mm-hmm. And the uh, sheer, the billions of dollars you have to put into that kind of stuff, um, it's a, it's a, um, a, I almost said a roulette wheel. It's a, it's a treadmill where you have to keep going. You can't just yep. throw three shows out there and milk it for the next year. You got to keep going with new shows. And you're competing against some of the big heavyweights uh, right now, like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, et cetera. Paul, this isn't the first time they tried to create their own content. Do you remember the hit series, Planet of the Apps? <laughs> uh, actually, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, but Nobody no, I mean, does. I know what it is. Yeah, nobody, nobody does. does. Exactly. Uh, you know, Apple, uh, they're, uh, you know, it's kind of hard. It's hard to explain, but like institutionally, Apple has this kind of, um, I don't know, uh, goody two shoes kind of a thing going on, right? We're not going to have sex or porn or Mm -hmm. anything like that in our app store, right? It's like the Steve Jobs uh, kind of uh, mentality. Like, this is not for adults. We're the adults. We'll tell you what's good for you. Um, That can't fly on a TV network or whatever. Um, What are their shows going to be like? Is it going to be a bunch of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood type things? I mean, what are we talking about here? Do they? I I can't remember. Does Apple still have, or maybe it's vice versa, have a seat on Disney's board? Yeah, uh, I remember. Yeah, I think. Steve yeah, they, no. Jobs there's a was. yeah. Uh, Steve Jobs obviously sold Pixar to Disney, and yeah, yeah there was a link up there. I'd have, I'd have to look that up. I don't remember. But there there's is, also the rumors or whatever. Maybe they even mm-hmm. announced it that Disney is going to have its own streaming service. Little surprise. Oh, they there. absolutely are. Yeah. And by yeah. the way, you know, I um, 
Disney has its own little thing too. Obviously, Disney branches out. You know, a mm-hmm. lot of brands will do this. They'll have sub brands that have like you know kind of grittier content or whatever. Um, but you know, you know, because you have a little kid. I mean, D- yeah. Disney's, you know, for kids, like the most wholesome thing on earth. They they yep. turn that into a, 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 a what I think is kind of a horrible thing with their theme parks where you're all in with your kids, thousands of dollars later, you go by. It's like it's worth it's worse than like a weekend for you and I in Vegas. Like, oh, much it, it's, much. You know I've what I mean? Like to Disney many times. It's much yeah, worse it's, than a weekend in Vegas. Well, it's insidious, right? So yeah, I'm I'm sure that's the model for Apple, but I mean. When you think of, seriously, I mean, uh, Game of Thrones on HBO, or go back to The Sopranos, or uh, The Handmaid's Tale on Hulu, or uh, Narcos, or uh, House of Cards, or whatever the big shows are on Netflix. You know, the one thing they all share is their adult content. They're basically rated R, um, or or literally would be rated R. Um, This is not Apple's thing. Now, you could argue there's space for for cleaner content and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Fair. Um, But I... I, (laughs) I don't know. I just uh, Microsoft went down this path. I'll be right. That's part of my article. You know, Microsoft for a brief time in the early, well, I guess it would be late '90s, early 2000s. Uh, Internet Explorer four came out. Must have been '98, '99, somewhere around there. They had the Channel Bar. Disney was on there, by the way. And the idea was that the web was going to be this place where content was going to be delivered. It was a little ahead of its time, but at that time, Microsoft was investing in in is uh, in um, their own content. And the one site I re- remember off the top, my, the top of my head is something called Mungo Park, but there were other examples of that. And what they quickly decided or figured out was, this is not a good place to be, you know, because you're either doing this thing or you're not. And Microsoft was not about that. Like for mm-hmm. Microsoft, it was like a little side thing. And and I think that's the, the problem for Apple. Um, I don't see a version of this where Apple becomes the CBS or the Disney or whatever of the future. I, I, I just... You would have to give up everything else for that to happen, and I don't. know, Maybe they plan that, but um, it's just that's not Apple. You know, yeah. it, it's it's. I don't know. They certainly have they have hundreds of billions of dollars to throw around, so whatever they can do what they want. But yeah, it seems like a mistake to me. We will uh, we will see. Hopefully, well, there's supposed to be what a, a spring announcement for that. There's also rumored mm-hmm. an iPad Mini refresh and some other stuff coming down the pipeline, which actually is yeah relatively interesting to me because i think for my kid's birthday in june she's going to get an ipad yeah as much as yep. it hurts me well no I, I, it's fine i mean um the ipad mini refresh doesn't look as good as i'd hoped it was going to be but the 9.7 inch ipad becomes like a 10 point something inch and it's probably in the same body so it's smaller bezels etc cetera, et cetera. so i think that stuff's fine those are good those are good devices um the you know you and i had talked i don't remember when the other day about the possibility of a like a, what, what would a video service from Apple look like? We kind of threw around some numbers on what the cost might be. And I think one of the things I had said at the time was if you think about the cost of a new movie, mm-hmm. it's nineteen ninety nine typically on iTunes, um, you know, that maybe that would be the logical place for an all-you-can-eat kind of movie service or whatever. Um, I don't believe that that's what they're doing. But supposedly yeah. their TV service, whatever this encompasses, is going to be fourteen ninety nine a month. Hmm. And I, I don't know, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, look, if they come up with something that actually competes with TV, yeah, you know, YouTube TV is 40 bucks a month, yeah. um, you know, direct TV now I'm sure is about 40 bucks a month. I, I think that's the going rate mm-hmm. for those kinds of things. I don't think that's what it is. You know, we probably pay, I pay for the, the most expensive version of Netflix cause you can do 4k and multiple mm-hmm. devices and my kids all use it. So like I have 10 of them, my two kids use it. Um, well, you know, one of them's out of state, know, so whatever. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, um, and I bet that's fifteen bucks a month. You know, yeah, but that's Netflix. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, these. Uh, one of the things that a lot of um, people people when they look at cord cutting is they say, well, if you add up all the services that you yeah. want to pay for it, cable's cheaper. But the the difference, at least uh, for for <laughs> me, is that you can turn those services off and on as much as you want you don't have to subscribe we only subscribe to two if we're going to sacrifice anything it's going to be hulu um keep netflix and then drop hulu for probably candidly when disney whenever theirs comes out Um, right but that's you're right and that's the benefit uh depending on your cable package you you probably could save money but if if you're doing this just to save money the problem with cable you've seen this probably like cable the price creeps up over time right yep 
So you kind of come in at some price point where you're like, this is great. And then uh, two years later, you look at your billing, you're like, when did I start paying $170 a month for cable? You know, whatever. Mm. And so we used to, we had gone back and forth between cable providers at one point in order to, because that's how you can cut down that bill. Um, we cut our bill significantly uh, when we dropped cable. But uh, yeah, same thing, like you said. I mean, we, it's funny, my wife and I watch a couple of shows on Hulu regularly. So I, that's one I would drop too, but actually we use it. And then uh, we watch Netflix. We, we're finishing up a series tonight, for example. Amazon comes with Amazon Prime, so whatever. You just kind of yep. get that one for free. But we wanted to watch the most recent season of Homeland. And so we signed up for Showtime Now or whatever they call that. The first month was free. So it was probably only six or ten episodes. I don't remember. The show was terrible anyway. But we watched the whole thing in like a week. And then I just canceled it. So we never even paid for that, you know. And, um, you know, when Game of Thrones comes back, I'd like to wait until the whole thing runs and then I'll sign up for that. And mm. even if you have to pay for it, whatever it is, 15 bucks, you know, to watch the whole thing, that's a good way to do it too. And that's, that's yeah. what you're referring to. Like you can just go in and out. So yep. if not something to appears it works on every device, you're not tied to that yes. gargantuan yep. box from the cable. Yeah. Like, right. and there's all these sub services like epics every once in a while will have something mm. I want to watch like Berlin station. You sign up for that for months, probably 10 bucks and then you get out, you know, yep. it's just, I don't know. It's it's that's the nicest thing about it. Getting off of cable is it's like having a tumor removed. You know, it's painful. You don't want to do it. You mm -hmm. you dread the appointment. It you know, it's just it's awful. Yeah. The uh, one thing but that once you, you do it is great. Yeah, the one thing that you miss is that it takes a little bit more work to watch a show cuz it's like is it on Netflix? Is it, but the but if you're subscribing mm -hmm. to this stuff anyways, you have that pain problem. You got to like is it on Netflix? Is it on Hulu? Is it on Amazon Prime Video? Yep. Is it on whatever? Um but I don't but know. I've looked at it. I mean, yeah. I've looked at all these things and thought to myself, if I had to, I could have Netflix this month. It would be fine. And then next month, yeah. I would switch to Hulu, watch some different stuff. It'd be fine. Yeah. Go back. You know, you could literally survive on one of these things, and that's inexpensive, and it's great. Yeah, you really, um, you really could, because you can binge watch. That's the benefit. You can just watch the whole that's series. The, yes, and and so that's the thing. Like my wife and I, it's really interesting because we 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 did this in fits and starts. Like we dropped cable, then we went back to it because we couldn't stand it. And then we dropped it. We're never going back. And really what you're getting rid of is uh, habits, right? Because whether it's live TV or recorded TV, you get used to watching shows a certain way. I, I, don't, I can't say I refuse. Every once in a while I will do this. But I basically never, ever want to watch a show once a week as it goes. I want to watch that thing. I want yep. to binge watch it when it's done. I don't like waiting a week. Um, and sh TV shows today, a lot of them are just too complicated to wait for periods of time. Like when Game of Thrones comes back, it's going to be a nightmare. The thing hasn't been on TV for two years. I don't remember anyone's name or where they were or what happened mm -hmm. to them or what, you know, they're going to bring back stuff from some of the early seasons because they always do. And it's like, what the, what are we talking about? Like shows like that are really hard to digest in, you know, piecemeal as you go. Yeah. Um, you know, the, there are problems here depending on what you like. If you like sports, um, you're going to need some kind of a live TV service, you know, um, at least during the season that you like your sport. Or you can do, like, we do an MLB TV package uh, for the Red Sox, and, um, you know, we just watch Red Sox games or whatever. You can do that. But Yeah, or just go grab an HD home run, and then you get over the yeah. air right onto your yeah, there are TV. Yeah, there are solutions, right. There's a lot of. Yep. It's yep. just more work, and so it depends on how much you want to put into it. Much like a smart home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kind of got to do some research. I got a, uh, a caustic text message from a neighbor who noticed I had color lights outside and wanted to know if I was using them to celebrate the Patriots' Super Bowl victory. And then words were exchanged, and now I, I, uh, we don't text anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, folks, is how hue lights can ruin your neighborhood yep, friendships. Yep, for you. <laughs> yep. You got anything else for today, Mr. Therat? Uh no, I may or may not write that Apple thing today. I, I don't know. I, I'm. We'll see what else ha is going on. But no, not really. What have you got going on today? The usual. Mm, yeah, just the usual. I think. Just the usual. All right, folks. Well, that wraps it up for today. Hopefully, you enjoyed this Tuesday episode because we didn't do it yesterday. And we'll catch you back here tomorrow on Wednesday. <laughs>